OMG. Uh, I am sure that people don't normally start to talk with OMG. But that was a surprise. I mean, I'm, I'm so shattered, I don't know what to say. <laughs> but it was a lovely surprise. And I am so happy. My darlings, my family, my friends. The divinity of me bows down to the divinity in all of you. Now, you might wonder what on earth I'm doing here. For the last three decades, I have been on the hot seat, supposedly hot, and people are asking me questions. But what is this role reversal? Why am I on the other side of the fence or the other side of the grass? And just one thing comes to mind, that if you think of something and it is in total harmony with the universe, then the universe conspires to put it on a platter and give it to you. So one day I was just looking out of my window at God's glorious nature. And I remembered the innumerable countless talks that I am answering questions. And in that frame of time, I suddenly felt that I was talking to Anamika. And I said, is this a sign? Am I supposed to be on the other side instead of the receiving end of the questions? And God is great. Here it is. And let's see how it works out, guys. So without wasting any time, let's call Anamika onto the show. Anamika. So beautiful, so lovely, Anamika. Here you are. And uh, I, I don't know if your seat is hotter or mine because <laughs> I'm never in this space. Bacha, what do you think? Uh, what crossed your mind when uh, this idea of Fructify took seed and is actually right here with us? To begin with, when you said, is it my side which is hotter or yours? Are you and me separate? Are you and me separate? So let's establish. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely, Bacha. So beautiful. Lovely. And, uh, you know, before we get into our uh, intricate, interesting, inspiring conversation, let's just establish uh, and introduce our eye to eye space, yours and mine. Because I, I just want to. Put all the <laughs> so believe that like this is how you said that you were looking out of your window and this beautiful idea emerged and here we are having a chat um, and actually not having a chat this we do very often but letting everybody into our beautiful space and becoming part of their space but who would believe that two years back I didn't know you you didn't know me and uh, we were just names to each other. But how beautifully this ocean of love, ocean of oneness engulfed us when you became part of the I to I family and I became part of the I inspire cosmos. <laughs> and uh, it was so organic that from being, um, you know, two people where I addressed you as. Mrs. Nirja Malik, <laughs> you became Nirja Ma. And so you've already established Bacha. So we have, this is a disclaimer. That this is a mother daughter conversation happening. And this is to tell everybody that you're not born with one family, you're not born with uh, limitations, you're not born with any structure. You're born 
to realize your divinity you're born to realize your abundance and as you walk on your path you meet more and more and more of your soul family many soul mothers and daughters <laughs> and brothers and sisters and friends and soul mates so this is a complete privilege ma that somebody who has been an inspiration to so many people and um, what can we say about you like you say you know cancer survivor uh, conqueror conqueror cancer <laughs> not just cancer let's move that but a conqueror in every way and uh, and here i am sitting uh, <laughs> very excitedly wanting to talk about what is coming in the way so yes looking forward to this lovely conversation <laughs> and welcoming everybody else into this beautiful sacred space that we share you know um i always believe that there's a perfect time for everything and uh, there is divinity there is uh, there is uh, harmony in the universe and i have to share this with you and all of us because yesterday yesterday and when i say yesterday i mean Uh, early this morning i was awake like maybe 2 or something and i have to share these words with you so there is one life that life is mine now there is one mind that mind is my mind there is one spirit governing and directing all things there is one presence and one power controlling everything i am one with god the infinite i am one with god's peace at the center of my being there is peace at the center of my being the eternal peace forever dwells in security a mighty god power goes before me making easy instant and perfect my way we are one so when you say about multiple families extended families we can embrace the whole world and that whole world belongs to us and we belong to everyone and uh-huh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> the world but the stars and galaxies and planets and so much more one with people one with nature one with oh my god like you started <laughs> so you know uh, beta there no rules and i'm a novice at questioning i can talk non stop about myself but i want to shift the focus entirely on you and there were those beautiful breathtaking photographs uh, of a space where you merged with the elements so before i get on to the next questions i want you to tell me a little bit about that where were you what were you up to how were you immersed in that lovely space oh you know when um when you're one with the universe it's it it doesn't matter where you are in your physical being like just now i could be sitting in a certain space a certain address but i'm also dancing on a mountain top i'm diving into the ocean i'm flying with with the birds i'm sliding down rainbows and uh, for me this entire life is only a tool for me to realize the oneness that exists within and without and uh, even when i travel whether it's for work or for pleasure or what and there's no division i don't work like that there's no separation i'm not from sorry people but i'm not from <laughs> <laughs> there's, no, there's no nothing there's just 
an extension, an extension of your being and emerging with the ocean where you, it's a very humbling and a very powerful process because you, at one point you feel so humble that in this grand scheme of things, God also thought of creating me it, with this majestic <laughs> and these beautiful waves that are dancing, the sunshine, the sun rises and moonlight and everything. He actually spent time in front of me and that is humbling. And on the other side, you feel, wow, no power. I, I exist too. And my, this is the eye to eye journey that I'm nothing and I'm everything. So, uh, yeah, so those are beautiful experiences from different spaces. And I think some of the photographs we just saw were from the Andamans, uh, where I celebrated my very, very special topic. <laughs> My mother was oh, watching. <laughs> so all you out there who hide their ages, don't do that. Share it. Share it. Every single moment is precious. There's no thing required. Yes. You know, I, I want to uh, say something here in America because some women at 40 feel that uh, life is past them by. Uh, some women feel trapped with their own limitations that you were talking about. And here I see a, a young person rushing off to be by herself on a 40th. I do know that uh, your birthday celebrations extended for many months after that. You probably oh, still celebrate. Sorry to cut you, it's still on. I still have some people <laughs> who, you know, who are eager to celebrate. But because of the pandemic, we are going a little easy. Yeah, just, just a month and a half, we have a whole year too. <laughs> Excellent. So I, I promise you that within the 15th of Feb, when I do know it was your birthday, to the next 15th, uske pehle to hum, inshallah, God willing, we will definitely meet. Yes. And I'm coming to your point where, where you talked about especially women feeling trapped in their lives or uh, or feeling that yes there could there was so much more to them but life has passed by and this is something i i'd like to share aloud that you know it's it's not women or men or you know a particular age but as humans we are constantly waiting for somebody else to bring us happiness we're constantly waiting for our different relationships to make us feel fuller. And it's never going to be that way. Because everybody in that relationship also, it can be a beautiful mother-child relationship, siblings relationship, uh, a man-woman relationship, a woman-woman relationship, or whatever. Um, everybody is also constantly a work in progress. So why are we waiting for somebody else to fill that, that space. Because what the, who we are and what we are becoming in our journey can be very independent of the other person's space. All of us are unique in our own way. All of us have a life that cannot be replicated at all. Me and my sister born in the same house have completely different lives. A um, husband and wife married for 50 years think differently. A child who's born out of a mother can have a completely different vision and understanding of life. So why are we waiting? So I think I think that is what it is. And I'm so grateful to God for um, helping me feel that within, that I'm not going to wait for somebody else to bring me love. I'm not going to wait for somebody else to bring me happiness, joy, comfort, peace, calmness. I am that because the moment I'm waiting for somebody else, it is, I'm already establishing I'm not this. I'm lacking this. So when we operate out of abundance, when we operate out of that oneness, that the divine is within, that that beautiful creator is right here creating every bit of me, then you want to share that. And in that sharing, you kind of attack. <laughs> 
and you just invite and become a magnet to all that you are actually uh, putting out there. So yes, beautiful women, men, children, seniors, young people, whatever. <laughs> Don't wait for love. Don't wait for joy. Feel it and share it. Flow with it. And, and live it. So basically, if we can look for God within, everything is within. Our love is within, our fulfillment is within, our satisfaction is within, our oneness is within, and we are complete from what I understand. And I resonate with it. We are complete in ourselves. And that is the beauty of it all. Now, I'm going to start at the beginning. You remember that song in Sound of Music? Let's start at the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I want to know how your journey or did you always like dancing? Did you? I know at the moment you're restricted. Just your my people tell me, you know, if someone tied your hands, you wouldn't be able to talk. So I dance with my hands or my eyes or my expressions. And I'm sorry to restrict you here. But please tell me how this journey of dancing began. Well, that, how is uh, only the creator can answer, but well, uh, my mother claims that I danced much before I learned to walk. And, and I'd like to believe actually every human is like that. You know, a child is swaying and moving their limbs even without music. So I, I do think so, but well, of course, I, uh, I hear we're talking about me. So we're going to either pull that focus light inward. That yes, I think it is. Uh, I don't even remember. I mean, I, not dancing ever. And uh, my dad was a sailor, so I'm told that even on the ship, because my early years, the first three years of my life, I've sailed a lot. And uh, because we were at sea, every evening apparently there used to be a little party with you know whatever the crew would get together and there would be music, ABBA and Boney M and all of that, and. Uh, yeah, like people have worked all day, but here's this child who hasn't done anything. So I just wanted to, I would look forward to those evenings. And um, and obviously all this, I've been told, but I have a very visual memory. So I almost feel like I remember every detail. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm told that even when everybody would get together and there would be music playing, and once it would stop at a certain hour for everybody to retire to their rooms, I would go and slam the speaker saying, why has this stopped talking? <laughs> Why <laughs> Give me more. <laughs> then <laughs> more. more. <laughs> and I think it was that. So um, yeah, like ever since I remember, uh, and and I think a lot of credit goes to my parents because they identified that. My mother, my father, they identified the fact that our child is a dancer. So yes, I was encouraged. Um, to uh, begin my classical training in Kathak at the age of four. And of course, as a child, irrespective of how I felt, okay, I, I, I enjoy dancing and I love dancing, but I did not go enroll myself into a dance class. So deep gratitude uh, to my parents for identifying that and encouraging my journey right from the time when I didn't even understand that. And of course, like, Major gratitude to my grandparents. Uh, every evening, they would sit for their evening tea at five o'clock, and they were not allowed to go out for their walk until they saw me dance. And uh, yeah. your rules, your rules. <laughs> okay, because, and I'm saying five o'clock simply because yes, we had homework to do and things. Otherwise, I don't think I would like I would be dancing in any case. So yes, we, I, I, you know, I, I was packed up, okay, finish your homework. And the moment I would finish and the clock struck five, I was down at, you know, with my floor, with two people watching me, like, there's no better dancer. My grandmother would just keep looking at me, the best dancer, sabse acha dancer. <laughs> and the reason I'm sharing this is because, did I know back then, 36 years ago, that I'm going to be a dancer? This is... Uh, what the blessing that is going to be bestowed upon me and this is going to be my path, my career, my purpose? No. But I think um, I've been hugely fortunate 
to be born in a surrounding where i got that love that support that encouragement and continue to get that even today so i think you know it's so strange that when i think uh, about your life and i think about mine okay we might be many many decades apart but the fact that you also grew up with your grandparents your father is in the navy uh, there's so many similarities so perhaps that is how we you know just connected and i i am so grateful because uh, uh, now i have a, you know i feel like a mother hen with a whole brood of youngsters <laughs> and i have to admit that when i deal with the young ones i actually feel way younger than my age and i i need to really thank you people for it so now bacha i want to know at what age did you start ada wow. anamikas dance and arts academy at what age did you start it ma ada is a blessing for me i mean i don't think um as a human as a mortal it's even in my capacity to begin this journey because ada is not just it's not a company it's not an organization it's home it's home for many 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 people and um, it, it's it's a temple for for me and and for many i was 17 right out of school uh, i'd finished my 12th boards and uh, and of course like i shared that it's from the age of 4 i started training uh, again before i even get on to other i must make a mention that uh, my school played a very 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 big part because even as a student i was choreographing annual days i was uh, choreographing talent shows and things which my teachers really really encouraged me to do identifying that okay this girl can bring something and <laughs> uh, that beautiful uh, energy space that i lived through across years is what gave me the confidence i think because it just came naturally and i think now that i look back it wasn't really about the teacher in me but it was about the joy that i felt that i wanted to share that the 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 magic that i experienced that i wanted to recreate for many 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 more people and that happened across school life where i come to my training and and of course any weddings anything okay anamika chalo dance sikha do maybe some diwali function some this that getting everybody together and you know so i was constantly choreographing that's all i did uh, and so <laughs> to the board examination or whatever the cbsc for passing me <laughs> because i don't think i studied at all i only dance i only have memory of dancing so well coming back to your question neighborhood people they told me okay you know well garmi ki chuttiyan it's summer holidays why don't you keep our kids busy and teach them some dancing and you know you're so good and all of that and okay as a 17 year old i felt great i have two months before i get my result and uh, i can earn some pocket money and enjoy dancing and everything and that is how ada actually happened it was on the 6th of may 1998 that uh, what it just happened it happened with four neighborhood children coming to me and by the end of summer holidays there were women and there were other kids and there were different people who were wanting to be part of that space and that summer workshop just never ended you know it's like a summer love that turned into this long drawn ever forever, forever journey <laughs> so that is so, how it happened this started so basically i feel that what helped you along i mean look at your organizational capacity for one so young like 17 is a very tender age and you managed to organize you managed to choreograph you managed to do all those things and i can quite understand uh, the way you have moved from strength to strength bachcha it it is amazing because i have gone through your videos and what really stands out is that you did something that has never been done before 
And here I am talking about the Red Fort, no less than the Red Fort. So will you tell me how that came about, please? Okay, I'm going to share things, but I don't have answers to any hows. <laughs> <laughs> just, just do it. You don't need to say how. We understand. <laughs> so, well, that was uh, 6 October 2006, a moonlit night. And when uh, the Red Fort, New Delhi, reverberated with sound and music and dancing again. And the flashback to that story is that in the in the um, years before that, we were staging shows. Ada had reached a beautiful stage where there were there was a beautiful extended family, lots of students, hundreds of kids and grown-ups and people training here. And uh, we started designing musicals. I started producing musicals. And we had uh, some of the beautiful performances at different auditoriums in Delhi. There was Kamani and there was Siri Fort. And there's a reason I'm mentioning, because our last performance was at the Siri Fort Auditorium, which is, of course, one of the most beautiful and prestigious auditoriums. Now, three months after that, I was at the Red Fort Delhi to see the Sound and Light show with some people. And end of the show, they asked me, so what did you think of it? And I said, perfect. And they said, that you thought that Sound and Light show was perfect? I said, I don't know about the Sound and Light show, but this venue is perfect for my next show. And they looked wow. at me. And, and they laughed, they literally like kind of laughed on my face saying, ha ha ha, this is not Siri Fort Auditorium, this is Red Fort. This is a monument, you can't be dancing here. And yes, D Delhi has opened its monuments across the years to stage performances. There are performances that have happened at Purana Kila uh, in front of the Humayu's tomb near Kutub Minar. But Red Fort Delhi was unheard of. There were things that have happened outside with the sandstone at the backdrop, but nothing ever inside at the Divan e Khas. And, uh, and, you know, it was almost like, what do you people know? You know, I, I, I go on, laugh at me, but I could see it happening. I could see my dancers in white. I could just feel the magic and it's happening. And six months after that, um, 6th of October, 2006, full moon night, 300 dancers, 200 musicians, and musicians from across the border. Because again, this twisted girl, right one month ago, I, I said, uh, you know, when last there was dance and music at the Red Fort, that, that was during Shah Jahan's time, 350 years ago. And there was no Sarhad, there was no boundary, there was no India, Pakistan. So how can I take all this you know, uh, beauty and magic and everything all by myself. No, we need to share it with our neighbors. So we invited some artists from Pakistan as well. And and Ma, I, I'm, I'm not this name where, okay, you know, somebody calls from my office and the other person say, yeah, 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 we're dying to work with her. Not at all. I don't know. When you said, how did it happen? I don't know. I don't know how I had one of the most amazing architects designing my stage not a set designer but an architect i don't know how the entire team came together i don't know how these 300 people of all ages starting age four were at the red fort at 5 30 in the morning to do a practice because the monument opens at 8 8 30 for the public and we had to get out of that space so we had these even the four-year-olds queuing up how did it happen? I don't know. I don't know where the music came from. I don't know how the poetry flowed. I, I wrote I, I, I wrote poetry for that show and it just flowed. And I'll make a mention here that uh, even though I've always had this ear for Urdu, my grandfather knew Urdu, but it's not something that I've read or I wasn't exposed to it too much. But I would just, while the show practices were on, I would just... A wake up from that three hour sleep. I, I got only three hours to sleep for six months uh, every single day. And in between those three hours, I would wake up and start writing. And I had to actually get a dictionary uh, from in Urdu to English and all of that to even know what okay. I was writing. And, and the script flowed. And I truly believe, I truly, truly believe that if this can happen to me, 
this is something that happens to each and every person you know the moment we open ourselves to the universe the moment we surrender the moment we place our faith saying i know this is happening and you got to make it happen and and it happened so that's how it happened. So that means that you were so passionate. Acha Anamika, sweetheart, can you just come down a little because your head is cutting, uh, getting cut off, and I just want you to get within the frame. Yeah. Ah, better. That, yes. Perfect. So basically, what I understand from this is that if you are passionate, and if you do it with, you know, intense faith. Surrender, belief, and the fact that yeah, this you visualize and it happens. So, Hamari a choti si farmai shaab ke liye ke apne ek kuch likha tha for the darga. And uh, I remember asking you a couple of years back that, Bacha, have you danced to your poetry? And I remember you told me, Ma, in my mind and my soul, but not in the body. So, our affirmation it would be beautiful if that music could be transported into your movement. And I look forward to that from you. As God wills. As God wills. Amen. Amen. Even as you're sharing uh, these beautiful magical tales from my life, I'm just so overwhelmed. And I'm so grateful because um, I don't know what I've done to deserve it. And I don't know, but, but I'm doing everything I can to try and prove worthy of this love and magic. I I'm just trying. I'm trying. God is great, Bacha. And uh, many more years, and not only really years, I think many more lives till Bhagwan says, Okay, enough is enough. <laughs> now, to <laughs> Upar Aja. Now, I want to ask you now, we've gone through this pandemic, and there are so many people who are shattered, who have uh, turmoil in their life, uh, they're feeling restricted with, uh, you know, meeting their friends or uh, there's, there's so many things that pull them down, especially the youth. Because when you see something happening in a youth's mind, it gets magnified. So if love and joy can get magnified in an adult's mind uh, who is open and receptive to the universe and is soaking and absorbing everything in to get happiness out of it. At the same time, if there is unhappiness, misery, that can get equally magnified and pull someone who's not able to think correctly. I know that we are giving a lot of emphasis on mental health and uh, how to how not to think of it as a stigma, to ask for help and to be under this uh, umbrella that you're not the only one. There is consolation in people going through it together. Can you shed some light, Bacha, on what and how to overcome those hurdles and get to living life in a beautiful and wonderful way? Um, Ma, I'm, I'm just going to start in a broader way, and we'll come into the pandemic story. but. I feel like I turn to nature for everything. Mm -hmm. The fact that, you know, the, nature goes through so many seasons and it doesn't shy away. Mm -hmm. There's autumn, it sheds all of itself. There's snow where everything freezes, becomes still. There is summer where the streams are flowing and all of that. Uh, there's spring where you have flowers blossoming, there's color everywhere, and it's constantly changing. We, we understand it, we accept it. We accept night and day. We accept 
mountain peaks and valleys. We accept that. But as humans, we want to press the pause button. We don't want things to change. We just want to be where we are. And, and it's not possible because we are part of nature. We're no different. So why should we not go through seasons? How can we not go through seasons? How can there not be this beautiful blossoming spring? How can we stop ourselves from shedding in autumn? How can we not be flowing and falling and rising? And I think truly the essence is in that, that when you know that it's a flow, when you know that this is not my ultimate reality, my ultimate reality is love. My ultimate reality is divine energy. And whether, I know it's getting a little philosophical, but um, we all have gone through losses in our life. I know, I know from your story uh, that the, the kind of loss that you have experienced as a mother, you know, having so many children, that didn't really come about in flesh and blood through you, but, but you did experience them in your heart. Are they not alive somewhere now? Are they not blossoming in all this youth that you talk about and so many people addressing you as ma have these beautiful seeds not uh, taken shape and manifested into beautiful trees today? And that is where I think we humans limit ourselves. We want to only be these contained humans, have this one structured life, one address, uh, gather more, all of that. We don't want to give. We don't want to let go. We don't want to uh, empty ourselves. If the streams don't dry up, how? where will the rainwater go? Where will the fresh raindrops go? And, and that is what the pandemic is for. That it's not just, and I know that it's, uh, yes, we've all had this, um, you know, a, a little pause that has happened in our flow of life, whether it's work, whether it's meeting people, celebrations, festivities. More than that, there are people who've lost their lives. More than that, people who've gone through a lot of pain and their loved ones have not been able to reach them. And, or even been around them, but not really been able to support them or help them. And what is God really trying to tell us? That it is only in you to heal yourself. Nobody is going to be with you. And this is the first time we are experiencing that. That it could be your child, it could be your parent, it could be your lover, it could be anybody. You can pray for them, but you cannot help them. They have to muster that courage themselves. They have to muster that immunity, their physical immunity, their mental immunity, their emotional immunity themselves. And that is what we're scared of because we've not spent time with ourselves. And now suddenly we are isolated and we're stuck with ourselves. And now we have no choice but to look at ourselves and reflect. Questions that we have been dodging, insecurities, fears, anxieties that we have been brushing under the carpet and locking in cupboards and all of that. That, okay, you know, no time right now. I have this project to submit. No time right now. I have so much to manage at home. No time right now. And now suddenly we have the time to look at ourselves. Look into our eyes, look into our space and this is the opportunity for every human to reflect, where am I? And this is truly the eye to eye journey where we can look at a situation with the small eye where we see it as an issue. The small eye is an issue that everything that is problematic is going to be visible, uh, which is highlighting our pain, our suffering, our hurt, our anger, our fears, our insecurities, impatience, distrust, all of that. that's the issue. But the same situation is also enabling us to build our big I immunity. And what is that immunity? Our faith, our surrender, our trust, forgiveness, gratitude, love, 
compassion. When have we sat down looking at the world? We have been so busy. And this is the first time we're looking at saying, oh my God, itte cases ho gaye. Today, it's so many reported. These are not cases. This is not a number. These are humans. And it's not just those many humans going through it, but their radar of people, their loved ones who are also in that bubble. So are we not together in it? And that is what it is. It is us who have to look at it as an opportunity on how to transcend from our small eye issues and build our big eye immunity. And I know that there are people who are lost and that's, it's not just the pandemic, but in our lives, we, we go through loss. We go through financial loss. We go through uh, emotional loss. We go through you know, loved ones leaving. We go through so many different kinds of uh, suffering and pain and everything. But the moment we are able to look at that event, at that situation, at that condition, OK, I can't change this. Somebody has moved on into another life space. I can't bring that person back. But what can I be? And I know that for me, this journey got triggered off big time um, when uh, my father transcended into the other space. Because I, I would question myself saying, you know, I could have done something and I could have saved him and I could. And suddenly that I became so big. And this is not the big I. This is the small eye camouflaging itself in the big eye ego. I could have done it, really? I could have saved a life? I, as a human, no. No, but what I can do is I can learn. I can learn from his life and I can learn from his death and, and, and he can become part of me. And I think that is the process that started happening for me uh, 10 years, exactly 10 years into Ada. Ada was 10 years old. 2008, when, uh, when, with, when the journey became a lot more awakened and aware for me. Because when it's only when you go through that personal loss, you know how Rumi says that wound is the place where the light enters. So unless or until we break, how will we even know we existed? And it's a very beautiful process I'm going through where I think at one point of time, I felt, you know, we have to integrate ourselves. We have to come together. And, you know, there are pieces of us lying everywhere and all that. And now I feel, bikhar jau, yaar. Bikhar jau. There's more of you. If I'm one person, if I'm one girl, if I'm one dancer, if I'm one mentor, if I'm one teacher, if I'm one speaker, there's only that much. But if I just dismantle myself and I just dissolve myself, then I'm you, I'm her, I'm him, I'm this, I'm that, what am I not? And, uh, and that is what, when we work on ourselves in an individual space, our small I individual selves, then we host, holistically expand to the big I infinite oneness. Then we know that mera tootna may be wohi hai, mere judne may be wohi hai, I am this, I'm that, I'm nothing, I'm more, I'm less, I'm what am I not? Am I separate from him? And, and when the creator has brought me down here, he's given me a home, he's given me food, he's given me family, he's given me a path, he's given me work, he's given me, he's taken care of me. Why am I now doubting it? Have I grown up that much that now I can question him? That now am I not trusting God enough? That aap le aaye, tab mein chota tha, I couldn't understand. So, you know, I was in surrender. Now I'm this really intellectual person. So I'm going to question you. No. This is the time. This is the time all of us have to tap into that faith within, that surrender, that, that love. And, uh, and, and if we are in a blessed space, Share that blessing. If we are hurting, reach out and ask for help. The fact that we don't reach out to ask for help is also somewhere of where we're operating from ego. You know, ki main nahi mangunga. I'm not going to this thing because how can I ask for help from another person? But the moment I see that divine energy in that person, 
will I not be able to ask? Did we shy away from asking our parents? When we were little kids, we didn't think how silly my parents will think. I'm so dumb. I'm asking for this. No, there was no filter. There was no evaluation. That's where we are going off. We are judging ourselves. We are, there is a self-sabotaging you know, journey that we are on. And that's what we have to put a stop to, the self-limiting, self-sabotaging beliefs. We have to start realizing that there is love flowing in our blood, in our breath, in our veins, in our soul, in our heart. And it is this love that connects us. And we hear it from each other. We hear it from everywhere. I don't even know how, you know, something happened and this person reached out to me. I, somebody connected me to this doctor. Somebody got me this job. Somebody. So Miracles. Miracles. We believe in them when they happen. But when we're not, we're not, it's not going as per our story and our understanding. And, you know, we want to be script writers, directors, actors. Are God is saying, relax, you just act your part. I'll send you the script. <laughs> so, so, Bacha, from what I understand from the lovely things that you have shared with us, that first, the only thing that is permanent is change. That is the only thing that's permanent. And secondly, if we just destroyed the borders that we have created amongst ourselves, not only countries, not only different spaces, but beyond time and space. Yes. When we realize that the world over, bacha rota hai, sounds the same. Yes. Lakti hai, sounds the same. Hasta hai, sounds the same. Kil kila ke. There is nothing to stop a child. I resonate so beautifully with everything you said. And what occurs to me is that if we could all descend into a childlike love, not only for ourselves, but for everyone around us, look how harmonious and beautiful the world would be. Yes, we started this by saying that we are all and I live for the day when not only in word, in thought, but also in deed, we shall all truly be one. <laughs> so where are you? Do you have any? I know you turn around and say, Ma, I haven't thought. Or uh, why are you asking me how? Uh, let us say God is leading you from point a to b do you do you do you do you get any flashes of enlightenment or inspiration or some like i i i i suddenly had this thing that i have to talk to anamika do you do you see what is unfolding unfurling for this wonderful person that is sitting right in front of me i know people say 5 years from now where do you think you are i'm not going to ask you that I'm just going to say, what else? I know that you reach out for the stars. What do those stars, those planets, have in store for you? Can you tell? Love, love <laughs> and more love. I am a poor, hungry child who is always wanting more love because I know that. I need to carry that forward. And it is the love that is filling me that is also flowing out of me. And constantly, constantly working on myself. And Ma, I used to make this uh, thing, of course, like you said, that, you know, I want to do this. And, and it's beautiful to have dreams and visions and goals and uh, objectives and everything. It's beautiful. It drives you. It motivates you. It makes you work hard. It just pushes you. And... Uh, but where do these dreams come from? Where do these goals come from? Where, where does this vision come from? And uh, I've, I'm a hard working girl, but I've stopped working hard. To <laughs> <laughs> so you I, go I, with the flow. <laughs> absolutely. 
absolutely and and it it it's the most amazing process and i have to have to share this um i know we've, we've almost been on for an hour and before we close down because there may be people out there who need to hear this that when ada's journey began at 17 or i to i uh happened manifested out of ada's journey down the lane the origin of that for me was death i chose death god gifted me life as a 16 year old i attempted suicide so i'm bringing us back to the mental health concern and um, which is at least now we're talking about it openly i'm talking you know 97 when uh, no there it was hush 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 you can't talk about these things and um, and what had happened nothing had happened to my physical space nothing had happened to me as a person for me to take that decision i was born in a beautiful loving family beautiful doting grandparents lovely supportive parents lovely sister neighbors a beautiful school friends anything and everything a human needs yet when i opened myself to the outside world and started reading up the papers because i didn't used to you know i would always be dancing and things and everyone you know teachers and at home i was i was told you know up your general knowledge come on you need to know something about the dance karte rehte ho sara din you have to know you have to have uh, some knowledge about what's happening in the world you have to you know be a little more awakened to uh, an information around and i was in my lovely bubble where everything is beautiful and good and love and magic and all that and that bubble burst for me because when i picked up the papers it was iraq wars there was kashmir terrorism there was death there was rapes there was murders there was all of that and as a 16 year old i could not comprehend what is the truth what is the reality is this world that i'm living in in this lovely bubble with love and protection and security and safety is that the truth or what i'm reading that is happening in the world where so many people are suffering is that the truth and that got personalized when i also lost both my grandparents that i was very very close to within 6 months and it it's like the buddha story you know where he gets out of his palace and sees poverty and illness and death and everything and that set him off to the path of enlightenment but i was no buddha and i was just a little girl and i didn't set off on any path of enlightenment i i said i love you god and i want to be with you i don't want to live in this world and and that did not mean that i didn't love the people around me or they didn't love me but in that moment i just i said i want to be with god i love you so it wasn't from a broken space as a human it was even that was from space of surrender and the reason i'm mentioning this is when people make comments like oh what a coward didn't think of family oh what a coward didn't think what the parents will go through what the ch- uh, friends will go through what the husband will go through what the child will go no you don't think you actually don't think i did not think in that moment of pain i was not thinking how will my mother cope with her child's loss what will my sister do across her life you know what will my teachers say what will happen to my neighbors what will my father do no i did not think because pain is so engulfing and it is real so when people around in our lives go through pain don't mock that pain don't belittle their pain don't think are isse kya hota hai humne itna kuch kara hai you know i have gone through so much i have come out of it maybe you have maybe you have maybe this person is not able to gather that immunity so be sensitive be compassionate be loving be kind and if you can't help offer help get them help tell them i'm not able to understand maybe it is a lot for you you cannot tell somebody oh you've lost a girl your girlfriend has betrayed you come on there are many girls waiting no 
maybe that boy was really really in love and is not able to come to terms you can't tell somebody oh you've lost a loved one you know ye to it's the life cycle we all have to go through death of course everybody knows that but in that moment they can't possibly see their life without that person so we have to be sensitive we have to be human we don't have to be anything other than being human and humanity means love it means compassion it means caring it means kindness and well coming back so that 16 year old girl was unequipped to handle i saw it as an issue i was in the small eye and i drowned god thought otherwise he said chalo you turn let <laughs> no coming back and and which is why which is why i so value this life and it's not like i don't go through pain in fact till the age of 16 i had gone through no nothing after which i've lost dear ones i've lost a dear friend i've lost my grandparents my father so many people close to me uh, there have been emotional detachments with people there have been upheavals in work there has been so much that has happened but now you know that nobody is going to be your savior there is no knight in shining armor darling buckle up and get going because if you don't do it no one else will if you do it the whole world will you open yourself to healing and the world will offer you healing there will be people caring for you there will be love that will reach you there will be solutions that will happen but if you don't care about yourself if you're not going to give yourself that love and give yourself that chance give yourself that opportunity to move from the small eye to the big eye to move from the individual space connecting with the infinite oneness then it's not going to happen and once you do open it then there is no space then you're not able to tell a mixed word now where now where is it where is it where is it all leads me to the magic because there is no other space that exists in magic you know uh, anamika i am so deeply touched that you have shared every bit of yourself and every bit of your emotions your feelings your experiences and and i'm very grateful to the people who are listening in because beta these words will give them hope encouragement inspiration aur aap jahan se kahan tak pahunche ho may your blessings uh, may everyone be blessed to move from the small eye to the big eye and i want to tell you that i remember when see there is something innate in you ke agar aap kisi ko milte ho you manage to create a kind of a space for everyone however angry and upset they are like i remember uh, you went uh, with your mom for getting the vaccination done and uh, you saw in front of your eyes how uh, badly behaved people in power were and then you got into action you started giving the tea you started your organizational capacity and capabilities of four year old came once again but i want you to mention here that with your caring your concern your compassion for the elderly by just you didn't tell anyone you just got up and you started pouring out the tea and you started passing out those hard hearted people actually got moved into following your example which by the way just flowed spontaneously you didn't have to think twice ke acha ab main ye i am going to do this no and you're right when people say what are the dreams you have someone asked me this question and i remember i was shocked i i've never had dreams i said i haven't dreamt i've just done 
And I think I resonate with you so much because I see uh, sparks of myself in you. And what I can say here is that your wonderful positive energy is impacting millions of people through your dance, through your uh, eye to eye meditations. Uh, I'm looking forward to the new moon meditation tomorrow. And uh, may your tribe, Abu uh, Ben Adem, may your tribe increase. I will just say one thing, Anamika, that may your tribe increase because you give solace and you give a lot of hope, encouragement, uh, love, uh, spiritual. Um, connections to people around you and my blessings are always with you but yeah uh, may you grow from strength to strength Thank you, you know as you were sharing, as you were talking and uh, as you can see i'm i'm all tears and um, you know I, I i was just realizing that it's it's almost like the breath that you're inhaling and exhaling Breath is so important for us to be alive, but we can't hold it. We have to let go. We have to breathe in and we have to let go. And that's the biggest, that's the biggest lesson that it taught us. And, and I think that is what the entire life journey is about, that in one moment you can feel so full that you want to give and offer and share. And the next moment you're completely empty and you're out there to receive, receive love, receive blessings, receive guidance. And, and that is what it is. The silsila of receiving and offering, of breathing in and breathing out. And this is life. This is what is keeping us connected. This is what is keeping us alive and afloat. And, uh, and I hope that each one of us can feel that wholeness, feel that fullness within and give and offer apna dard bhi baato you, you know what may be somebody else's pain that is what you have done you have shared your journey of pain of hurt of suffering uh wearing it you know as pride and so many people have learned from that pain if you would have hidden this pain how would people have learned how would have people received how would have people gotten inspired so kharcho jana we have to spend all of ourselves when we have love let's give love we have pain let's also give our pain because that pain you don't know that may be that sweet balm on somebody else's you know wound the pain that you're sharing about and and this is what it is and uh, i'm going to end with because you anyway mentioned about the poetry for hazrat nizamuddin aulia and I think that kind of stitches this and that's where it came from when I was told by one of his descendants that you have to write something. There's a prophecy that you have to write something and you have to give to the world what you have received. There's a lot of, and he told me, there is so much pain. And I'm just going to translate it in English for people who may not have understood that. There is, there is a lot of pain, suffering in the world. Uh, there is poverty, there is sickness, uh, joblessness, so many things. And you have to write something which expresses that pain. You have to write something that embalms that pain. And you have to write something that is a prayer and a blessing for that pain. <laughs> And I said, it's not possible. How can I write? And of course, I can't write, but I can write. And it flowed. <laughs> and and uh, the one, one of the paras, it says, Main taklif mein tha, aur tu chup tha. Khamosh raha jab main tarpa. मेरा दिल टूटा भ्रम भी टूटा कहलाया गया जग में झूठा मेरी जान जली तूने कुछ ना कहा मेरी रूह तड़पी तू डटा रहा मैं बिखर गया 
मैं खत्म हुआ जब मैं ना रहा तब ये इल्म हुआ तेरा मकसद था मैं बनू नया तू ने दे दी मुझे नई अदा तू मुझे मिला मांगू अब क्या तू ही तू है तू ही तू था मुझे इश्क हुआ मुझे प्यार हुआ मेरे पिया मेरे सरकार वाह 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 what a beautiful ending and uh, i've enjoyed uh, being in the other side of the fence bacha and i know that this was just a one off thing i'm not going to repeat it but uh, this will last me a lifetime thank you darling thank you so much grateful grateful thank grateful and thank you to my team for giving this very beautiful opportunity for me to share the sacred space with this divine angel who is lighting up so many lives so thank you thank you thank you and with our love god's love we spread it and may you impact as you already are doing lives and lives and lives and we are all one करिए कुछ करिए नस नस मेरी खो दे हाय कुछ करिए कुछ करिए कुछ करिए बस बस बड़ा बो दे अब कुछ करिए ओ कोई तो चल से तू फड़िए तू बेतरिए या मरिए हाय कोई तो चल से तू फड़िए तू बेतरिए या मरिए चक दे Yeah